This video is made possible by Ting Mobile. Get $25 off your cell phone bill by visiting rll.ting.com. This is the most common map of the world that we're used to seeing in schools and on Google Maps, but it doesn't tell the entire story of which countries are actually the biggest or even the most influential. We're used to only seeing countries in terms of the geographic space they occupy, which makes countries like Canada, Russia, Australia, Brazil, or even the United States seem really big. And while they are in terms of land, they're really not so much in terms of population, at least when compared with other places. Some small countries have huge populations, while some big countries have tiny ones, and the differences can sometimes be completely baffling. For example, this small island in Indonesia called Java is home to more people than the entire country of Russia, and yet it's difficult to conceptualize this on just a mere geographic map like we're currently looking at right now. In order to visualize how big or small a country or place is in terms of people, we have to look at a radically different map like this one that was created by Visual Capitalist back in 2018. The link to this map is going to be linked down in the description if you want to go check it out and see for yourself. Each country's size on the map is directly proportional to its human population. They are all made up of squares, and one square is equal to 500,000 people. The map contains a total of 15,266 squares that truly show where all of the world's 7.633 billion people live across the world like you've perhaps never seen before. Let's start by taking a look at North America, and specifically, the tiny strip that is now Canada. Canada's 74 squares are indicative of her population of only 37 million people, which is vastly smaller than either the United States or Mexico. But going even further, Canada has a smaller population than Poland, and even has a smaller population than just the US state of California alone. When the United States was declared independent in 1776, her population was only about five of these squares, or 2.5 million people, roughly equivalent to the modern-day population of Lithuania. But in the centuries since then, the United States population has exploded to become the third largest in the entire world at 326.8 million. More than one in 10 Americans live in California, America's most populous state, which has 16 times the population that the entire United United States had in 1776. Despite being the largest in land, Alaska is the 48th smallest state in population with just a bit more than a single square, compared with Hawaii's three. Down south, Mexico has nearly three times the population of Spain, and is by far the world's largest Spanish-speaking country. Central America and the Caribbean have a lot more people than a lot of us probably think as well. Guatemala's population alone is roughly equivalent to the Netherlands, and combined, Central America's population is also greater than Spain's. Brazil is the Jupiter of the South American continent. Brazil's population is nearly the same as the rest of South America's population all combined. And while she began as a colony of Portugal, Brazil's population is now over 20 times larger than Portugal's. But even as huge as Brazil's population is when compared with the rest of South America, it's only the world's sixth and soon to be seventh largest. The country that will soon be overtaking Brazil is just across the Atlantic over in Africa. Nigeria. Nigeria's population has ballooned to 196 million people today, making it by far the most populous state of Africa. Nigeria's population is larger than Germany, France, and Spain all combined, and it's projected that by the end of the 21st century, Nigeria will overcome Brazil, Pakistan, Indonesia, and even the United States to become the world's third most populous country. But other parts of Africa are fascinating under a population map too. Let's begin with Libya, which seems to get a lot of attention in the news and is a very well-known place, despite only having a population of 6.5 million people, which is less people than even live in Serbia. Put another way, Libya has about the same population as the US state of Minnesota, but has about seven times more land. But that's not even the most shocking country here, because both Namibia and Botswana have tiny populations relative to their geographic size too. Namibia is roughly the size of Pakistan, but with the population of Albania, while Botswana is bigger than France, but with about as many people as Slovenia. South Africa's population dominates the entire southern third of Africa, and it's pretty easy to see how the top three African economies are Nigeria, Egypt, and South Africa based simply on population. 
While not in the top three African economies, Ethiopia is also considerably larger than most people think it is, with a population of 107.5 million, roughly half of Brazil's population. While smaller than Ethiopia, Uganda also has a much larger population than its geographic shape on the map would suggest, at 44.3 million, which is more people than South Sudan, Chad, the Central African Republic, and Rwanda all combined, and roughly equivalent to the population of Spain. It's also interesting to note that today, the center of the Arab world's population isn't even in the Middle East, but North Africa. The Arab states of North Africa are home to 242 million people, while the Arab states of the Middle East are only home to 164 million in comparison. Iran is Western Asia's most populous country with 82 million people, significantly more than double the population of Saudi Arabia. Despite being incredibly influential on the world stage and having a a lot of land, Saudi Arabia is actually a fairly small country population-wise. Iran and Turkey both have substantially more people, and despite being smaller in geographic land, Iraq has more people too, while Yemen is incredibly close and has significantly more people than next door Oman. However, the biggest population in the Middle East and the Arab world is centered in Egypt, which is home to nearly 100 million people, or roughly three times the population of Saudi Arabia. The Greater Cairo metropolitan area alone has a higher population than all of Syria. Nearby Israel is also incredibly densely populated for its size, with even more people than the substantially bigger Libya. And over in the Caucasus, Azerbaijan is the dominant force, with more people than Armenia and Georgia combined and over three times Armenia's population alone. Meanwhile, the European part of Turkey, while small in land, still has a population of 11 million people, which means that if it was its own country, excluding the whole population of Turks over in Anatolia, European Turkey would still be the continent's 14th most populous, with more people than Greece or the Czech Republic. Europe's population in general is still larger than all of North America's combined, but it's still small compared with either Africa's or Asia's populations. Russia is Europe's most populous country, but not by very much. Despite being the world's largest country by land, there are many, many significantly smaller countries that are home to more people that are pretty surprising, like Bangladesh, Nigeria, and Indonesia. European Russia itself is only home to 110 million people, and Europe's next most populous country is Germany, which is home to 82.3 million people, which is about 75% of European Russia's population. Germany and Turkey have very similar populations, while the Netherlands is massively crowded for its size. The 17 million people who live in the Netherlands is more than the combined populations of both Sweden and Norway. Scandinavia itself is incredible incredibly sparsely populated. Denmark has more people than Norway, while all of Scandinavia combined has less people than the low countries of the Netherlands and Belgium. It's also clear to see how England's population is able to dominate the rest of the United Kingdom and even Ireland. England's population is dramatically larger than Scotland, Wales, and Ireland all combined. In fact, it's roughly five times larger than all the other countries in the United Kingdom put together. This means that universal opposition to something in Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland could be easily ignored if just a moderate majority of the English population supports it. Further, the island of Great Britain has more than nine times the population of the island of Ireland. To put all of that into perspective, England's population population is comparable to Italy, while Scotland is equal to Slovakia, Wales is equal to Lithuania, and Northern Ireland is equal to just Slovenia. Combined, the UK's population is even larger than France, while England on its own has nearly 10 million more people than all of Spain has, despite being much smaller in land. In the grand scheme of things, it's clear to see that Western Europe has a substantially larger population than Eastern Europe has. Western Europe is home to 402 million people, while Eastern Europe is home to 345 million. But that isn't including the Asian part of Russia, which, while on a geographic map seems huge, seems equally tiny on this population map since it's only home to 34 million people. To put that into perspective, there are more people living in a city than living in the entirety of Asian Russia, and that city is Tokyo, home to over 38 
8 million people. The sheer scale of Tokyo as a city is difficult to comprehend, but I'll do my best. Besides just the Asian part of Russia, there are more people who live in Tokyo than live in Australia, North Korea, or even Canada. Put in another way, Tokyo's population is very similar to the entire combined population of Oceania, which is half a percent of the entire human population in one city. Japan's population as a whole is similar to the population of Russia, while right next door, South Korea's population is more than double that of North Korea's, and right next door to there is the world's most populous country, China, home to 1.415 billion people. China is home to over 18% of the human population, and it absolutely dwarfs almost every other country around it. Mongolia and Asian Russia just appear as tiny little blips right next to it. Mongolia is the world's 18th biggest country by land area, roughly the same size as Iran, but with a population of only 3 million people. The Beijing metropolitan area in China alone has roughly the same population as the entirety of North Korea, while Hong Kong might be 163 times smaller in land area than Sweden is, but their population sizes are incredibly similar. In fact, Hong Kong's population is even bigger than a lot of countries are, like Norway, Denmark, Bulgaria, and even Libya. This is all in a space that's roughly the same size as Luxembourg is in Europe. China has a higher population than all of Europe has combined times two, but not far behind that is India, the world's second most populous nation that is rapidly catching up to China with 1.354 billion people. When combined, more than one out of every three humans alive on the planet live in either China or India. You could fit the entire population of the United States into India four times over again and still have room left over for more. India's most populous state, Uttar Pradesh has the combined populations of Russia, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Austria. Bangladesh has a really, really huge population for her size at 166 million people, which is more than Germany, the UK, and the Netherlands all combined. But the world's most populous Islamic country is Indonesia, with nearly 267 million people. To put that into perspective, if you subtract Turkey and Egypt from this equation, then Indonesia has a higher population than the entire rest of the Middle East combined. Inside of Indonesia is the island of Java, which is the world's most heavily populated island. And as mentioned previously, Java's population is even greater than that of all of Russia's. And finally, we arrive at Australia, an entire continent that's only home to less than 25 million people. There's a lot of ways to put that small population into context. Two US states have a greater population than Australia. California, and Texas. There are three cities in the world that currently have a higher population than the entire Australian continent. Tokyo, Delhi, and Shanghai, with many more like Sao Paulo, Mexico City, Cairo, Mumbai, and Beijing rapidly approaching. Australia is insanely underpopulated for its size, and there are dozens of countries across the world that are smaller but have bigger populations. The most shocking to me is probably North Korea, which has just a bit over a million more people than Australia's got. And perhaps as equally as shocking is the island of Taiwan, which has a very similar population to the continent of Australia. In my mind, these have been some of the most shocking direct comparisons between countries of different population sizes. But allow me to show you a presentation of the world's top 50 most populous nations in order so you can really see for yourself how big or small some countries in the world are compared with one another. Here is China, followed up by India, and then a dramatic plunge down to the United States followed up by Indonesia, and then Pakistan, then Brazil, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Russia, Mexico, Japan, Ethiopia, the Philippines, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Egypt, Vietnam, Iran, Turkey, Germany, France, the United Kingdom, Thailand, South Africa, Tanzania, Italy, Myanmar, South Korea, Colombia, Kenya, Spain, Argentina, Algeria, Sudan, Uganda, Ukraine, Iraq, Canada, Poland, Morocco, Uzbekistan, Saudi Arabia, Peru, Afghanistan, Malaysia, Angola, Ghana, Mozambique, Yemen, Nepal, and finally, at 50th place, Venezuela. I'm sure that a lot of these countries are probably a lot smaller than you might have thought. But there's something else that you might think is really big, but could actually be a lot smaller. And that would be your phone bill, and T-Mobile can help. 
I personally just switched to Ting Mobile a couple of weeks ago. Why? Well, because of this. Yeah, that's actually a real phone bill that I received from my old carrier just last month. But Ting Mobile has three brand new plans to make sure that never happens. You can get talk and texts for only $10 a month, data plans starting at $15 a month, and unlimited for everything for just $45 a month. And switching plans is actually really easy because you can keep your same phone number and use pretty much any phone at this point. But what's also great is that Team partners with several massive networks in the US, which means that it's very possible you can keep the exact same carrier that you're using right now, but at a huge discount. So if you've ever gotten a phone bill like mine, your service probably won't change. So whether you use two gigabytes or 20 gigabytes a month, there's a perfect team plan for you and it's so easy to get in touch with them if you ever need something. You can call them up and an actual human will always pick up right away. Or if that's not your thing, you can message them on the internet or even talk to them through their Discord or subreddit. And of course, if you're around Wi-Fi all the time like you're working from home, then you have the flexibility to save even more money because the Team Flex plan gives you the option to just pay for what you use. So if you want unlimited data, you can go absolutely nuts. So if you go to rll.team.com or by clicking the link down in the description, you can use your last phone bill to compare just how much you would save. And best of all, Real Life Lore fans will also get a $25 service credit that could cover months of service. So just click on the link in the description and give it a try. Plus, clicking on that link really helps out this channel a lot. And as always, thank you so much for watching.